back, getting down with my podcast. He Baron is making a comeback. Tired of the drugs, holy sex and Benjamins. This time I'm doing more than six episodes. Little Final Cut Pro, that was me a year ago. Half a million hits on only six episodes. A day's work and then online, but the cash. Well, 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 well. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of the new Learning Final Cut Pro 6 podcast series from PirateSchool.com. My name's Elliot Baring now. You may remember me as the man who set the Final Cut Pro world on fire with my world record-breaking Final Cut Pro series uh, that came out at the start of 07. Now, received thousands of emails over the past year saying, when are more episodes coming out? You only ever did six. Um, well, it's difficult for me to talk about, but finally feel I'm ready to sh- spill all and tell you what happened. And um, basically, when I knocked Steve Jobs to number two on the Australian um, technology charts with his iPhone presentation for almost 48 hours, I think I was at number one, the cash just started piling up. People were giving me offers. I was doing Japanese commercials. Um, especially with the success of my Final Cut Pro raps. Um, top talent in LA was asking me to produce produce their albums. You know, I was doing mixtapes for Kanye and all those dudes. Um, so, you know, I had beautiful women around me on the beach house, um, and it just really went to my mind. Next thing I know, I'm living in LA. Um, I owe a lot of money to a lot of bad people. I'm in with the wrong crowd. Um, I'm smoking crack like nobody's business. I have a nasty, nasty sort of cocaine addiction. And next thing I know, eight months later, Kanye and 50 Cent sit me down and say, yo, Elliot, you got to get real again. You're losing yourself to the drugs. Take my jet. We've booked you into rehab. You're leaving tonight. Well, I couldn't say no, and after about a month of crying myself to sleep every night, I finally realized that I hadn't hurt myself most. The people I'd hurt more than myself were the podcast listeners, you guys out there. So thanks for your emails of support. I'm clean now. I'm focused. I'm a full-time podcaster. And we're going to start right at the beginning, so sorry about that if you've been waiting for something new. Um, we're going to be looking at the interface today. Perfect for beginners. I'm using new software, so it looks super slick screen flow. Um, so let's start by launching Final Cut Pro. Now, as you can see, the interface hasn't changed if you're, you know, you're using Final Cut Pro 5. There's just a few nice features that we'll be looking at in coming episodes. What I'd like to do is just take you around and show you the four main windows and what they do. So. Let's start with the browser. Now, I'm going to make this window active by clicking on it. You can see that it is now light gray. Um, It gives you the title of the window in the top. Now, this is where we organize all our project elements. Now, there's a number of project element types, and we have our clips, which, um, as you can see, it's just sort of a, a film strip with some sprocket holes. We have our images, which is the same film strip, except it has ABC printed in the middle. We have our um, audio clips, which is the speaker icon. And then, of course, we have our sequence icons. Now, the other thing that we can have is bin. So if I right click and choose new bin, you can see it creates a folder. And we use these to organize our media and we can name them. So I'm going to call this clips. Then I can just shift select these clips and drag them in there. Now I can either click the disclosure triangle, I can double click the folder to open it in a new window and access my clips from there, or I can hold the option key and double click it and open it in a new tab, very handy. Also in the um, browser we have a number of view options. If we right click in a blank area we can choose to view it as icons, either small, medium, or of course large. List view, I would have to say, is the most useful because it gives us um, access to a huge amount of information from duration to the in and out points, to the tracks used, labels, audio types, our format. If I reveal our clips, it will show us um, the frame size, the frame rate, and the compressor used. Also has some really cool things like we can mark it as a good clip. So I can right click over this clip here 
and choose yeah it was good this one however was sucked no I can also add a log note so in my log note I could uh, double click there and say fantastic lighting okay now so that's basically the um, the browser we have another tab for effects and here we can access transitions um, filters and audio tr transitions and filters and some generators a lot of cool stuff there but we'll get back to that later now the next window we have is the viewer now the viewer is where we view and mark our unedited footage from the browser and prepare it to be edited into the timeline which is this thing down the bottom now to open a clip in the viewer we can just double click it and then we can click play I can click anywhere in this area and jump straight to it, the little mini timeline. I can also click drag to cycle through it. I can also view the audio um, waveforms by clicking on the audio track, so as you can see mono one. Now here um, the levels are very low so we don't have much to look at. We'll, I'll select a different clip for a better example. Let's go for this one here. If I click on mono one, you can see we get a nice strong audio signal that we can browse through, scrub through. Now, once we have set the in and out points, which we'll look at later um, in episode two, I can then drag this down into my timeline. Now, the timeline and the canvas are closely related. This is the canvas here, timeline down the bottom, are related in much the same way that the um, viewer and browser are. The timeline gives us a graphical representation of our sequence, our series of edits, so we can see what clips are where, how long they go for, and they, you know, go from left to right. And in the viewer, this is basically our video preview of that, our visual representation. So I can click play here and watch my clips. You can see that the timeline is moving through the, oh, sorry, the playhead is moving in the timeline as well as the canvas. Now if I stop this, if I drag my timeline in the canvas, you can see that it also adjusts it in the timeline. Vice versa is true. Now um, the transport controls are the same as in the view. We'll be looking at these later. We have um, our jog and shuttle controls. These are ways to rewind at various speeds. Um, this one allows you to scrub through a frame at a time or if you drag quickly multiple frames at a time. If we turn our attention to the timeline, there's just a few cool things you should be aware of. First of all, um, the blue icons, those represent the video and the green represent our audio. So because I was shooting in DVC Pro HD, we have four mono tracks, only two of those have audio in them. Down here we have our zoom control, so here I can adjust the vertical height of my clips by clicking any one of these. Um, little boxes. The second uh, one is normally the most useful and with this slider we can adjust the horizontal scale so we can zoom right in on a clip. As you can see in our little timeline um, ruler area we start going into frames so if we started at seconds so there's nine seconds there's 12 seconds when we zoom in we start being able to scrub by frame so there's 10 seconds 20 frames, 11 seconds, 5 frames, 11 seconds, 15 frames. Now a nice little shortcut key is Shift Z. This will zoom us out so we can see everything that is in the timeline. So Shift Z or Shift C. Beautiful. Now finally, if you want to mute an audio track, you can just des click on the speaker icon and it will go a gray. And now we know that no sound is going to play through those tracks. I'm going to turn those back on. So that was our timeline. Okay, we have the timeline ruler area. We can click in any spot to jump straight to a, a certain part of our sequence. Finally, we have our tool palette, which is where we get access to all our sort of cool little editing tools, magnifying glasses, razor blades, etc. To the right of that, we have our audio meters level. So if I click play, it will give us live feedback of the levels within the clip. So here this is nice and quiet. We cut to this clip. 
So there we go, that was just a brief outline of um, Final Cut Pro's interface. Once you get used to it, it's really simple and easy to work with. And just remember that the browser and viewer in many ways are linked, and the canvas and timeline are um, linked. Now, remember to make a window active, click on it once and it will go from a dark grey to a light grey. Um, we'll be back with some more much juicier stuff in the next episode. Till then, send through your feedback podcast at pirateschool.com. That's the new email address. And I look forward to hearing from you. Okay, take it easy. Bye.